Hi, this is Nick with Zamora Woodworking. Uh, I was just going to show you guys a little bit about the uh, file I have and the most efficient way that I found personally to cut out uh, 15 of the jack-o'-lanterns that everyone's so excited about right now. Uh, so this is the file. I guess I'll show a video in the future of how to make the file. I haven't got around to that yet. This is just kind of how to work it and then how to uh, set it up for the beginner. Um, if you look here, this is for the Onefinity Woodworker 32 inch working space. Um, this is one picket here. This is another one here, here, here. So it has a total of five pickets. And uh, I cut them at 31 and 3 quarters so that I don't, you know, I'm not fitting end to end. Uh, my spoil board's inset a little bit. So it just saves me that. Um, I usually secure it with a screw here and a screw here. Um, another good note with this is that uh, you need to make sure that your spoil board, you need to make sure that your spoil board has been flattened with relation to your machine. So uh, all these surfacing runs that people do, if that's not done, this is going to be very difficult for you. Um, this file works on the premise that you have a flattened board, uh, spoil board. If you don't, well, you might run into a lot of problems. The way this works is the boards are started at 0, 6, 12, 18, and 24 inches. Uh, the bottom left, I found that the pickets come anywhere from 5 inches, 5 and a quarter, all the way up to 6. The 6 inch ones I don't typically use on this, but don't pass them up either. Uh, they work really well for the tops because of the extra width. Um, if you do end up only getting 6, six inch ones because that's kind of, you know, this late in the year you get what you get. You can still use them. Uh, I bring them to the table saw first and rip them down, I think, to five and a quarter, um, <clears throat> whatever all the other ones come in, and then put them in here. But the way this is set up, you could fit a six inch one here, and then because the faces don't go all the way to the edges, it's still pretty forgiving. Um, so if yours are cut too short, or you know if this one's bumped over a little bit, you'll still be fine when this all cuts. I also have found the thickness in those is, you know, it varies big time. Um, you can send these all through a planer. I didn't find putting these boards through the planer to really be worth my time. So what I did is I've kind of been doing this for a while, making quite a few of these. I've made over a hundred now. I put these, I kept measuring the thicknesses of them and I figured out the about the thickest I've found was like 0.7 inches or so. So since I'm measuring from the bed surface, I put in um, 0.7 as my material thickness, and the bit starts and assumes that all this is 0.7 because the, the program itself has no idea that these are separate pieces of wood. Um, you have to keep track of that. So in your area, if your boards are, say, I don't know, 0.8 inches, you might want to put that in. Or if just one of them is 0.8 inches, do that. Because what it'll do is it'll start at the top, assuming they're all 0.8 inches. And you know, if you get down to here and say this one's 0.4, well, for the first pass, it may not even touch it. Um, but that's fine, not a big deal. It's better that than breaking a bit. And it'll just do an extra couple air passes over the ones that are a bit shorter, but that's fine. Um, with these, you know, they're, they're just little decorations people are gonna use for a couple months, and they're hopefully a good little money maker for you. So, treat it as such. But yes, I do probe off of the board. That seemed to be the best because if you probe off the top of one of these and one's taller, thicker, or was warped in that spot, or, you know, everyone says, yeah, get the straightest, the flattest, the this, the least amount of knots, what a, it is what it is at this time of year. And I think even at the best time of year, it is what it is. Um, I wish everything was perfect, but you know, we don't pay much for pickets, so. I'll just work around it. But the width of these does matter because you're gonna make a square when you're putting these together and you really need to make sure that the, the front part of your square and the back part of your square, so this would be the face on the front and then on the, on the back, those two widths are the same and then your side widths are the same. I make them all the same, uh, but if you don't do that, you're not going to have a square, obviously. One of the lengths of your size is going to be a little bit longer. You're not going to be too happy. Within a sixteenth or so, don't worry about it. But, you know, if you get these at five and a quarter, and then you try to put a six inch one on the side, uh, and then a five and a quarter on the other side, it's going to make it 
look like crap. So save the sixes for the tops, and then say you have extras, we'll then mill those down to a five and a quarter on your uh, band saw, or on your table saw, and you can still use them. So don't pass up the sixes. I do like those, I use them. I've found many uses, and but with this file, I do use the quarter inch end mill and the eighth inch end mill. It'd probably be even better if I only used the quarter, but I really liked a lot of these intricate details of like these mouths like this and such. So I just figured, you know, at one bit swap, not a big deal, especially if I'm cutting out this many, not too worried. And what I'll do is if I'm running out the, say I run out the quarter inch bit first, right? And then I switch to the eighth at the end of this. When I start my next file, I'll start with the eighth. I'll just have the eighth go first and then I'll switch to the quarter. So then it limits my bit changes as well. That's another, I, I don't know, pro tip or whatever you want to call it. With the profile cut that I've done, if it'll open, there it goes. I only cut down two tenths of an inch with my quarter inch end mill. I don't actually cut all the way through these. I just leave a scored mark on them. And that's because I found that, you know, it's not worth it to me to cut all the way through these, make tabs, break those off. I'm still gonna have to do cleanup work. So just score it, let me know exactly where the line is. I take them to my chop saw, cut there, cut there, cut there, done, no big deal. Then the other thing I know some people were thinking of was, oh, well, I'll have my end mill run all the way around it. That way I'll get precise, perfect measurements. Absolutely, I agree with you, you will get precise measurements. You'll also put a lot of wear and tear on your end mill. It'll look nice and crisp and clean, but I've just gone for the more rustic, rugged look, and it saves me time, it saves me money. You know, going all the way around these, all the, you know, every single one, that's just gonna take you forever. So again, I just use my end mill on top, it cuts there, cuts there, and your saw blade on your chop saw is not a quarter inch, so yeah, you do have to cut the top part there and then cut the bottom part there. Again, not a big deal. And yeah, I mean, you're not utilizing 100% of everything of the woodworker, but I, I'm slower than the machine is uh, putting these together while this thing's running. Uh, while it is running, I do not recommend, don't leave your area because some of these parts I put tabs on and depending on how good your bits are, the Jenny bits, I've had really good luck with making sure that those tabs stay and you may add more tabs if you find that you need more. I haven't found that yet, but I have found if I use a lower grade bit, it may end up putting too much pressure on just a single tab and it'll snap it. Um, I kind of hate having the Jenny bits that are really nice and I think they're worth the money, but I hate having them do this monotonous stuff but the cleanliness of the cuts is just, oh man, it can't be matched. So I'm kind of in a battle there. Uh, it depends on how much money I end up making from these. I may just continue to use crappy bits or the Jenny bits, we'll see. But definitely for the beginning, make sure that you are uh, paying attention and watching real, real closely. Like don't, don't take your eye off it until you get very familiar with this file. Also, with these planks, um, I'm making them 32 inches long, or 31 and three quarters, sorry. And I hold them down with a single screw on each plank on either end because I don't really care. I'm holding them down with a single screw on either end because I don't truthfully care, you know, if these are a little cupped or warped, if they're a little bit, if they're a big time, then yeah, you're gonna have to. But uh, see how this is in. This is my full working space, the 32 inches. This is in for it, in from it, sorry, excuse me. This is where the bit's gonna run. I do my screw and it's just below there. So I have a little bit of wiggle room to make sure it doesn't hit that. Um, some people use the plastic brad nails. I really do like those. However, I don't have a plastic brad nail gun. They need a special gun and special brad nails. And uh, I've just figured, you know, like after a while I know where things go. I pre-drill and then I drill them down in and I left room there. And I left quite a bit of room up here. And that's what I used to size up the uh, bit and what I was going to do off of that line. See, I've made a quarter inch circle through that. But uh, as far as the program goes, it has absolutely no idea that these are five different pieces of wood. Uh, you yourself have to keep track of that. The program does not. It does not care. It treats this all as one piece of wood. I put these squares just as a reference, um, so it, it will not cut around those. If you look at all these different tool paths, um, not a single one has it going around here because like I said, it didn't make much sense to have it do that. And yeah, it'll be 
clean, precise, and crisp. Also, the amount of money they're paying for these, people aren't really going for that. But yeah, just don't obsess over all that. Yeah, so if you look at the preview for this, we'll go into preview tool paths. Um, so I'll reset it, and then I'll preview all tool paths. So this is the, all of them being run out, and you see how it thinks it's all one piece of material, but you can also tell with that profile cut, see it did not go all the way through. I don't really care, I just come and clean it up later. But yes, this is one picket here, one picket there, one picket there. This has no idea about it, so your placement of these is very critical. You have to place it correctly. Um, I'll show you with the exterior profile cut. Sometimes this program gets a little upset because they are just lines. So with that, um, yeah, no tabs on this. This is just purely the cuts right there. Um, it, when I go to calculate, throws up a little bit of an error. Um, it, I just click OK and it works absolutely just fine. Eighth inch. You can see that only the more intricate ones are selected because the other ones cut just fine. There was no need to do that. I tried not to use my eighth inch more than I have to, mainly because I cut a bit slower with it. It, you know, I try to save it for nicer things. Have that calculate, and then I'll uh, look at the quarter inch end mill. <clears throat> so with the quarter inch. See right there, I added tabs. You may have to change your tabs, like I said, uh, depending on what kind of quality uh, bits you're using. Um, I mean, you can use crappy ones with this, but then you've got to adjust because of that. So if you need to add tabs, you can go to edit, and you can click, like say I wanted a tab here, click there, click there, I'm adding more tabs. It's not too difficult, but like I said, when you cut the first time, you'll see what parts mess up or this or that. Like you don't want these parts to break free because they'll come and hit your uh, end mill and possibly slap it and uh, break it, which won't make you very happy. So make sure that you do have tabs in there. Um, with this file, I've made sure to uh, ramp them in. You know, you don't want to bring your end mill straight down. Some people do it. I just don't, but it's whatever, whatever you choose. Um, calculate, open vector was identified, it's still run just fine. With all that being said, I will show you how on the actual machine to set these things up and hopefully get you off on your way to cutting a ton of these and having a lot of fun. The other thing I was going to say is you don't have to use these faces if you do purchase my file. Um, you can go online, convert them to vector, you can draw your own, you can go on Etsy and buy some, you can do whatever you want. This is kind of just a, a nice little format set up. You can switch them up. I'm thinking about coming out with another file with other faces or something like that, but obviously you're not set in stone to this. That's the nice thing about having a CNC is you can pick and choose. I mean, if you want to do something funny or put a, I don't know, somebody else's face or whatever you want to do, you can do that. Um, I just mainly created these boxes here and lined them up for a reference. So you know where you have to be inside, if you want to be in the middle, the bottom, the top. Um, if, you're, if you put your faces more towards the bottom, they're going to get a lot more light, but you can also kind of see the light through them. And if you put them towards the top, you get less light. So a lot of mine I tried to center in the middle of them, but it's all personal preference. Um, all right, I'll show you how to set these things up on the spoil board. Okay, so here's my Onefinity Woodworker 32 inch working area. I already have a grid written down on it. Um, this is also available on Etsy store. I'm just your inch marks 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, all the way up to 30. And then obviously that's 32. Same goes in that direction. You can see a couple times my zero did not work, and that was a part of the learning process. And that is why I now zero off the spoil board. But what I'll do is I usually grab these boards, um, look down them. I try to put the cup up. Um, I don't know if I can really show this on camera or not. Uh, if you look at this one, see it's a little cupped. Looks like a, like a little hill there. I try to put that facing up. Um, I'll start here. So on the file, it starts at zero. So zero. 
And then because I made it a little bit shorter, so this is 31 and three quarters, and my my spoil board is inset um, down in there. Like there's a lip right here, which also gives me a little like squaring bracket. I like that. Um, I haven't done any tiling yet, so it's never gotten away. But what I'll do is I put it right there, look at the top, make sure that's good, <clears throat> and then look up here. So I try to split the difference on that space, and then come over here, get my drill, drill bit, and take it through here, and I come as close to the edge as I can. This drill bit I really do like. I don't know who sells these or whatever, but it also cuts the hole for the uh, screw head. So when it comes down, it usually doesn't split. And I set this depth that'll go through this board, I'll go through my waste board, and once I cut, it'll kind of cut in here, because if you just screw in your waste board, you need really short screws, because if they just barely go to there, it'll lift up your waste board, which, no good. Um, then your waste board is no longer flat, at least for this cut, it is not. So, I'll go into the middle. Um, I would recommend when you first start, put one on either side. Uh, I just do the middle right now, so right there. Like that. And then what I'll do with that, normally I'll do these all in a row, but I'll show you the first one a bit slower. Um, take that guy out, grab this, and... Okay, so that is set. I typically do all of one side and let this, because if you try to do both, it just, before you screw them down, it seems to mess with things. Um, so I'll put that there. I'll start this next one. I've already cleaned off this surface, but it seems like with these, they always find a way to get more crap on them. And then these boards are kind of dirty too. So cup side, here's my six mark. And with the file, obviously use the six mark. Um, split the difference. So, looks like we're good right there. I will. Oop. So I've done this so many times that it kind of sucks in the different holes that I've made. I'll try to move on over a little bit. Well, it's going to go one way or the other. Luckily, this file is very forgiving. Uh, like I said, the smiles don't go out end to end on these boards. So, you know, if you're off by a sixteenth or something, you'll be just fine. And even if you cut to the edge, the way that I like to do these, I make the boards like this. So, you know, even if it goes out to the very edge and goes there, it'll be fine. Because you have this other board that'll be your side board that it'll nail into. It doesn't look like anything. Unless you tell somebody you screwed up, no one will even notice. So, grab this guy. And this isn't the fast way of doing it. I was just trying to show you my process. Bring it back over there. Bring the top up to that line. Just about. There we go. So, the faster way that I do this is I set them all up. Okay, that's there. And then that's 18. And then this is 24. Okay, so I'll go through here and do all of these. That one's a little bit low, but uh, that'll be fine. So what I will do is I'll go through and I'll drill all these first, come back with my screw gun, grab my screws out, do all of these first. Like that. And even if these boards lift with relation to your spoil board, as long as your spoil board is still flat, not a big deal because again, we set the depth for the thickest one that we I've ever seen anyways. At my local Home Depot, yours may vary, so obviously check the thicknesses of your board. Um, <clears throat> let me grab the controller, get him out of the way. So, 
that's there, that's there, there. So I'm just making sure each one is on the line. Um, I don't like to do the drilling here, drilling there, doing all the drilling first and then going back and screwing it because it seems to suck the boards different ways. So I'll go through and drill all those out, screw them all down, come on over here. Got all those. That one might be a little close, but we'll find out. I'll just be close to the oh shit button just in case. Don't act like you never used it. later if I don't. So, okay, there we go. Everything is secured. Um, what I like to do too is with the file, the zero I set at the bottom left corner because it is the easiest place to get to. Um, <clears throat> you can do the center, this and that. I find that more difficult, kind of a pain in the ass because everything's referenced off this bottom left-hand corner already because that's how I did my grid. I didn't reference it off the center because, you know, it's 32 and a half inches of working area. Well, my grid is 32 inches starting at the bottom left and we put the boards starting at the bottom left. So <clears throat> the easiest thing that I've found Obviously, get your drill off of there because I've had that kind of bind up in there. Don't tell Onefinity. Is bring that guy up. Make sure that these aren't in the way. Um, a lot of people have their screens knocked off. Move your screen first or make sure you don't have the massive screen. I do not, so I don't really have that problem. But you see these guys and these do not play well together. Move them up just a hair. All right, I bring it almost all the way over here. So if you have just started your machine, perfect time to make sure that your machine is all homed. Uh, whenever I home it, I usually try to bring it almost to where it has to go. So not all the way, but pretty damn close. So just for this, I will click home on all. So it's gonna home it all. <coughs> See how that cleared there. Didn't hit that. I don't have the really nice screen where if the boot is on there, it'll come forward and hit this, but just out of habit, I always do this. While it is here on your screen, which I will show you in a minute, I'm just gonna press it because it's kind of hard to move the computer and do, yeah, whatever. Anyways, I will click the home buttons on the Onefinity controller for the X and the Y, because right now they're at zero, zero. You can see it's all zeroed here, it's all zeroed here. Bottom left-hand corner, the file's bottom left-hand corner, home it, so, or zero it, whoops, sorry. So press the little marker button, and that sets my material as zero there. Now I need to get the Z going, so I will move this guy since this is the nice part, I know that the thickest board that I have on here is what, 0.7 inches, 0.8, somewhere around there. <coughs> that can vary. And like I said, we zero off the spoil board. Well, the spoil board is flat within relation to this. So I can go anywhere on the spoil board itself to get my zero. I just choose right over here. I try to use the same spot over and over. And I don't have it marked, but I have it marked in my mind, so that works. Keep it right there. Bring them on over. Make sure that's there, there. 
now going to click the probe Z button. So whenever you click the probe Z button, do not have this bit too high. If you have it too high, it can, <clears throat> it'll throw up a uh, big old error on you. It'll lose everything, it loses its mind. <clears throat> In your settings, you can always change that to the uh, max amount that it'll travel. So basically it's blind right now. It has no idea where this block is. It does not know. It's gonna go down and Onefinity was smart and they made sure that in the software it only goes so far and if it doesn't see it there it throws up an error because if this went on infinite it could just run this out or push this off and lift your whole machine break a bunch of crap so I think it's about three quarters of an inch I try to get it decently close not close where I'm gonna hit it but uh, I press B obviously make sure your speed's slower get it within a quarter of an inch or so <coughs> um, because yeah, if these two, if this doesn't find this block, it'll be treated as a runaway and it, it'll, uh, they have it set up so that it'll stop after I think like three quarters of an inch because really bad things can happen. It's, they're protecting, them, protecting us from ourselves, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, got this guy here. I like to rub back and forth to make sure, you know, I didn't get debris under there that's gonna offset me. This isn't so critical. But hey, I, I do that anytime, no matter what I'm referencing. Um, a lot of guys in our cow lab do that. Um, so I just kind of learned it from them. But yeah, anytime you put that down, rub back and forth, make sure you got everything off of there. <coughs> uh, press probe Z now. And yep, go tap the block. That's good. Also another check that we're not idiots. And I do love that because I'm an idiot. I do stupid things. Going down. Okay, also before you start, make sure you take this all off of there. Bad stuff can happen once again. Don't ask how I know. All right, so before you move anything around, I always like to bring the Z up and then find your thickest board. So I believe this was the thickest board, just randomly. Um, get my dust boot. I'm going to adjust these two guys because I don't want these bristles to be getting pushed in, but I also don't want them way up here. So loosen these two guys. It's a suck it boot. I think this is kind of a standard with this machine. Most people use it. Some people hate it. <clears throat> I mean, it works for me, so I don't hate it, but I guess there could be improvements. I don't know. Um, so this is the thickest board. I'm going to drop this down and have it to where, I know people say different things or whatever. I have it to where it's just a little bit above the material. Okay. that guy down. This is also a good time if you're using the router to check your settings on your speeds. Don't forget that. Um, you need to learn your feeds and speeds. There are calculators online. A lot of people that have, do your feeds and speeds and calculate them is very beneficial. Uh, I've started to do a bit of that, um, but the biggest thing is to make sure whenever you're cutting, you're getting chips and not dust. If you're getting dust, you're going too slow cutting or you're spinning too fast. Usually you turn down the speed, but you know, it's up to you. You do what you want to do. You will burn out your bits a lot faster. And especially if you're buying those Jenny bits that are a uh, pretty penny, not going to be too happy about running through those a bunch, but uh, they are well worth their money. I've used them religiously. Uh, although one is not in there now, I just feel bad using her for this purpose. Anyways, I will show you a little bit of the user interface and a couple tips and tricks in there next. Okay, back here, uh, I wanna look at the file real quick first. To make sure that your job size and position, <coughs> bottom left, remember we all, everything is referenced off the bottom left. The bottom left, this, see it says material surface. I just did the machine bed, so you need to make sure machine bed. See how the little dot drops down here instead of up here? 
machine bed and then thickness 0.6669 or whatever uh yeah leave that okay it's gonna say it's got to recalculate because you're an idiot and you started the other way and it's got to flip it the other to machine bed instead absolutely save me for myself so did all that what you need to do so I have the quarter inch bit in first so either I'm going to do the exterior profile cut first the faces uh, with the quarter inch end mill uh, profile cut I typically go with first because if I'm going to hit those screws I need to find out now uh, before I cut the faces and have to do a bunch of weird stuff to make it work the faces is probably the most interesting one so we'll just start with that one um, you right here it matches the material thickness. You can also put in Z equals and it updates it to be the Z number that we just put in from uh, our material. So we have the tabs added, everything else, um, quarter inch end mill, edit, uh, calculate. I click OK. There's an open vector somewhere, whatever. It just ignores. It's not a big deal. It always works. Click OK. All right. So the way that I like to do this is I'll uncheck the ones that I don't want to do yet. I know with, you know, if you get better at this, you can take these two that are both the same bit and you can merge them together, make one file where it'll just run through it. Since this second file takes so little time, I don't really find the benefit if I need to make edits to it later. It, just seems like a pain in the ass that I don't need to deal with. But anyways, I will save this. Visible toolpaths one file. The only visible toolpath is right here, so that looks good to me. Save. Alright, here is the Onefinity um, screen that I have currently going. This is talking to the machine. I like to do it from the laptop because then I don't have to save the file here, throw it there, yada yada yada. It's just kind of a pain in the ass, I think. I really do like this. So I will take the file. It's loading it. And whenever I'm doing this, I mean, you can look at the little screen that comes with the Onefinity, and it's usually duplicating this. Um, if you want to see how to get to this page, uh, it's up here, your IP address. And also, it's got that too. So yeah, I just enter it in right there. So normally it'll show up like this. I press this button, kind of just show you guys around. So right there, that yellow dot right there is the end mill right now where it stands in relation to the uh, working surface. So if you ever look at these, make sure, you know, it, it can show you a lot of good information. So it'll show you where your bit, as, bit is at currently. And if I move it around, That's a good thing to know. And then also, right there is the start of this file. So if you create multiple files, this and that, there might be other starting points. That is our zero reference. We've already set it. So things look good. I mean, we're not getting any errors because if we had, you know, set a center point reference, it'd be throwing up errors everywhere thinking that there's no way in hell this file is going to fit because you're in the center and you don't have 32 inches this way or this way. So that's a good check too, but if you're doing smaller cuts, always look for this little guy and see where it's at. And then go back and double check with your file and see if the uh, reference is on the board it, or the material or on the machine bed. Just a good thing to look at. So, and you can also switch your views around here, zoom out, zoom in. Um, just figure I'd show you guys the beginning of this file. Uh, now let's get to a little bit of cutting. Uh, I'm going to get the boot ready and put this on a little time lapse and enjoy.
Well, there she is. She's nice and cut up. Um, for you guys, that was a split second. For me, that was all eternity, holding that little hose to keep the dust down because the wife is going to be pissed when she gets home. Anyways, these guys, remove these. And I'll just show you the first one. So yeah, cut on through, knock your little tabs off. No big deal, I get a Dremel and then just smooth it out. Um, take this to a chop saw, I bring it up to my shed, and I'll take all these and cut with the uh, kerf going that way. On there, and I cut with the kerf this way, and then on this side, cut with the kerf that way. Cut all these out, and you'll have all the faces done. You'll have 15 done before you know it. Um, then you'll be working while the machine's working. Um, obviously stay nearby, just in case something bad happens. Uh, have your oh shit button ready. Uh, I guess I'll probably do videos in the future of putting the rest of it together, cutting the rest the fastest way I found with those. I'll see how this video goes and see what the feedback is. Like, subscribe to see more. And then also the file that I started with is on Etsy if you're interested. If not, you can look at it and kind of duplicate it. That was the fastest way I found to make 15 faces for the jack-o'-lanterns using the Onefinity. Thank you.